to session two of the Corbyn Dialogues. This is part seven and we're continuing with the Stanford MBA as a case study. And in particular, we're looking at how business maths is different to school maths, where somebody sets you problems, there's a right and a wrong answer, and they score your answers. Now, in business, you do do calculations, you do use some of the methods that you will have been taught, and they're very useful on occasions. But really, it's all about speed and finding answers that are good enough to meet the purpose of doing the calculation. And then when you found the answer, it's about how do you shape it? How do you present it in the right way? What level of accuracy is relevant to your purpose? And how are you going to make the answer have an impact so that it influences the progress of a discussion, for example? Now, we talk in this session about what's called the wow factor, which is where someone reacts to a calculation that you've presented to them. And just putting answers on a page with numbers has no real value in business. It's, of course, extremely valuable in science and some other fields of activity. But in the normal world of work, it's all about finding an answer that's going to fit the purpose and be good enough for that particular moment in time. It's, it's really using your intelligence to make it, what, more accurate, more, more what? Um, more understandable is the word that I'd use. Um, and also just more, I don't, it's, no, you don't need to know that it's $1,023.32 for a day. It's The big number there is 1,000. Um, yes. The little details don't have much effect on the information yes. that you're yes. trying to get across. And so what I'm, trying, what I'm probing you for is, is what's called the wow factor. You... Which, which is the 1,000. Yes. 1,000 there is the wow factor, not the $23.32. Exactly. Yes. So without being prompted, you found the wow factor. The, the wow factor is, if you go on that course, it's going to cost you $1,000 a day. Mm. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> it's it's yeah. a truckload of money, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> but that is only for the 120 days that you're in the course, remember. That's not for the 365 days that you're, at, that you're actually... No, but for every yeah. day you're there... For every day you're learning... Where you do have to be exact in business maths is what does the number represent in real terms? And you will see an example of drilling down into what is the number a measure of. Well, so you may not be learning. Well, every day that you're in a lecture or in the university, it's going to cost you a grand. You may not even be in the university. Yeah. Taking part in the course. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> or enrolled in the course because you may yeah, not be yeah. taking part. But, well, no, because that's the thing. Because you, technically, you'd be enrolled for your two years, right? Okay. Which is two lots of three hundred and sixty-five. Right. But it's only the one hundred and twenty days where you're actually involved in the three terms. Okay. That you're paying a grand a day. All right. This you is good. You're challenging my use of words in terms of involved and there. And uh, do you see, I'm being. Mm -hmm. I'm. Jumping for, between being pedantic and being loose and broad, and I'm waiting to yes, see what I jump on. How yeah. much you work with that, and well, and I bring things. What you're doing, the value you're adding to this conversation is is you're keeping it keeping it real. You you're finding the wow factor. I think you enjoyed finding the wow factor. I I did, and I didn't work out the amount of days at home, but... Ah, so you were still thinking in terms of years? Yeah. Oh, 365? Well, I, I just knew it was two years and so three times. So what would times. be the difference if it was... 365. Uh, yeah, let's, let's do this. Some, OK? Because <laughs> 2, O, 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 and then we divide it by... 365. Prob There's probably all the mathematicians in the audience yeah. have got the number already. <laughs> we have to resort to technology. And 
How much is it? Three hundred and twenty-eight dollars and seventy-six cents. Seventy-seven cents. Okay, yeah. so round it up. Three hundred and thirty dollars. Yes, so you yeah. rounded it up twice. That's good. We took a number of three two eight point seven six seven. You, an ordinary person, would round that up to three two nine as the nearest decimal, what's called the nearest decimal figure. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of rounding. And, I... and you've gone up beyond 329 to 330, again, to get the wow factor. Yeah. You, you, you did it to two decimal places. Oh, That's good. I well, mean, I, I did it to two significant figures. Two sig uh, you correcting me, and you're right. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean... The wow factor again is the three hundred, and you want to go even yeah. further. Well, well, no, I'm, I'm not going to round it. It's not three hundred pounds. It's three hundred and thirty. It's points <clears throat> actually, but yeah. And I think it, again, in the context of our discussion, the number of significant figures we use is important because it maintains a level of credibility and usefulness to the number. Mm. So as the more significant figures we use, the more it gets in the way of the wow factor. Mm -hmm. And that's important because in, in everything, too much detail gets in the way of communicating what you really want to communicate. Mm -hmm. And being over accurate or giving people too much data gets in the way of the purpose of so your conversation. I suppose what we're trying to say is it's expensive to spend, <laughs> to spend a day in, at Stanford Business School. To enroll on that course? Yes. Yeah. Because you may or may not attend. You That's may have true. a rich father who's enrolled you and you spend all the well, time in the pub. This one, this one's really, yeah, it is enrolled in the course. This is every day whether or not you're there. This is whether you're in the pub or actually at university. Yeah. If you've joined the course, you're paying $330 a day. Okay, so now that's looking at the uh, at it from the point of your point of view as an attendee. Mm. Now let's look at it from the point of view of the of Stanford University. Did you get a feeling looking at the numbers of how many students there are each academic year? No, I didn't see any figures on that. Um, you have mentioned to me before that it is a very overly subscribed course. It's the most popular course they do. So I imagine that they've made it available to a fair few people. Agreed. But then again, they wouldn't want to make it too many people because then it takes away from the... If you're paying £120,000 a year, dollars a year, I keep saying pounds, you want it to be personalised to you. And it did say on the course that the, the curriculum is personalised to whatever you want to learn about. So I'm going to assume that they're probably about... Part of the fun of recording this course with Corbin is keeping a po what's called a poker face, which is not giving away too much as he gives me his different answers. And this is a great chance to see my poker face when he guesses that only 100 people go on that MBA course. 100 people they take on. Okay. Per year. So... Our estimate is 100 mm. per year. There's an extra action for you. Find out. Find out how many people they enrolled each year. I can find out right now if you wanted. Can you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, look, and well, you could take save data at the time. Yep. You know, pause, so we're going to pause now while Corbin actually, his, S, his guess, it's, it's not really an estimate, is it? No, it's just a guess. It's yeah. his guess based on... Offering personalised courses, yeah. how many people they do enrol? Upper upper bound. That's my. Oh, so your range is what? I'd say my range is from sixty to hundred. Okay, it's a relatively large. So range. I'm going to call that a scale. guess. Yeah, <laughs> it's a re it's a reasoned guess. Sixty to hundred. Okay, I, I might be a lot of people off. Yeah, but, um, and and that sixty to hundred students enrolled in what's the course called? Uh, the Stanford Business MBA course. MBA, okay. All right, so... Let me have a look. Entertainment break while Corbin tries to look it up and saves the data, on the, saves the video. Mm -hmm. 
So, right, now Corbyn's going to come back to the actual numbers, which he's just looked up on the internet. And what were the actual numbers? Well, I was a long way off. It was, there were 8,173 applicants for 418 accepted new students. Okay. So working back from the, <clears throat> your, your highest guess was, was 100. 100. <laughs> yeah. And they actually take on 418. Now, while you were doing that, I did a, a, a not too difficult sum, which says that a thousand dollars a day. You times it by 100. I did. Yeah. <laughs> I actually multiplied yeah. by 100, which is quite easy in the decimal system. It's harder in some other systems. Yeah. All right. So if it's 418, it was a revenue of 12 million using Corbyn's estimate. Mm -hmm. to Stanford University of 12 yeah. million for 100. If, it, if you multiply it's that... like 48 million. Well, it's actually 50 million using your wow factor. Mm. So it's a $50 million business. That's what it is. It's a business. The other figure you looked up, which I didn't ask you for, but it's a very interesting figure, is the number of applicants, which was what? 8,173. Okay. So if we divide the number of applicants by the number of students they accept, mm -hmm. that's going to give us another interesting figure. The ratio of... Uh... Of how many people apply and how many people yeah. actually get in. Mm -hmm. So it's 19.55. Rounded up, what would you say that was? 20%. Corbyn has some interviews coming up. And when he made that small error there... I saw an opportunity to start building his soft skill of resilience, which is the ability to withstand pressure in an interview. People can build surprisingly strong coping behaviours, even through practising virtual or pretend situations. Human imagination and the subconscious are so closely linked and there is such potential power there for you to unlock just by imagining things and practicing. Well, actually, ratio, what's the ratio? One to one to twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Is one to twenty twenty no, percent? I didn't mean twenty percent, I thought it was a percentage. <clears throat> so why did why did you say imagine I'm that third person on the interviewing panel, the tough one? Why why did why did you say twenty percent? Because Corbyn? we I don't even know. I just wasn't thinking. Why weren't you thinking? This is important. Oh, I don't like the tough guy. Um, what is 20%? 20% is every one in five applicants gets a place, which is absolutely not the case. What is the real figure? It's one in 20. So how far were you out? A long way. What does a long way mean in a quantity? A long way means I was a factor of four out. And how many percent's that? That's... Um, like a factor no, of four no, is how many how many percent factor of four is how many percent it would be an additional 19 percent on on top of what i said well, no no that's not what i'm asking you an additional 90 i'm not <sighs> interested in additional 19 percent it is a factor of four what is a factor of four expressed as a percentage i'd say i'd say 20 percent so 25 percent sorry so how what percentage were you out by? 25%? No, that's what I was trying to, trying to get at. I, so what percentage were you out by? Were you wrong by? I, I think about 19%. You were only wrong by 19%? If, uh, oh. How would you feel if I told you you were out by 400%? If... If the number of applicants is... No, it's, uh, that's all right. Sorry, it's too late. All right, but thank you anyway. <sighs> you know, you, you, you did uh, quite well. Emotionally. And, and then he shuts up and withdraws so that you can't continue that fight. And then you... This is interviewing now. No, I've had a number and which have the, gone exactly like And that. then the dregs yeah. that you're left with, you then have to answer the next person's question. And if it's a real tough interview, the next person's going to be just as nasty or almost as nasty. Or they're going to give you an opportunity to escape to some other topic or whatever. And Now, here's an interesting I point. don't ever want to watch me watch that back. I'm just <laughs> squirming and not able to... 
Did you say then that you've had interviews like that? Yes, I have indeed. I haven't actually... I don't think it was a... I've had a mock interview that was like that. Okay, right. Yeah, it wasn't for a, a real thing. It was a Cambridge mock interview. Ah, Cambridge. Yeah. Fascinating. And I got grilled. I can't remember what we were talking about, but... Yeah, so uh, the yeah. suggestion is, if you interview... It was about percentage, actually. It was about what percentage does the moon increase in size when when there's a supermoon. Right. Yeah. And it was pretty much the conversation that we just had. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you're a practised interviewer and you're trying to sift out the one in 20 yeah. that you're going to accept, because that's what this ratio of 8,100, and they only accept one in 20, how do you think they manage to do that? How do they select the one in 20 and dismiss the 19 out of 20? How do they do that? Mm with an interview yeah but what kind of interview one like that a tough one yeah <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> a tough one so if you're going for an interview and there's a limited number of places and you've got a feeling of it what should you expect that interview to be like tough yes yeah <laughs> and therefore you should prepare for yeah. a tough interview. Now, it doesn't mean to say you've got to learn maths and be good at exp what, you know, it, percentages. I, I only missed, I said the word percentage as opposed to ratio. That was the only, that was the mistake they kick-started that. And then I... And what did the interviewer do? Picked up on a single word that was out and then grilled me for it. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. They'll do that. Yeah. The tough one, the brief he's got, he's probably a really nice person, yeah. or she. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they'll do that. What quality does it take to survive that? You've got to be able to deal under pressure and control the situation. And be tough. And be tough. Mentally, emotionally yeah. tough. Yes, you do. The course, if it's going to be a tough course on a challenging course, mm. you've got to be tough and highly motivated. All young people have natural resilience within them. But the life they've led perhaps hasn't given them an opportunity to develop real mental strength. So the secret is to practice with a friend if you can find someone or a family member and do the good cop, bad cop type of routine, good cop, bad cop game. Uh, just taking it in terms to be the good guy or the bad guy, the tough interviewer or the strong student you'll be amazed how quickly you can build up that mental resilience and you can have some fun at the same time. That's all been very interesting for me. So it's one in 20. And I hope interesting for you, I hope. Yeah, no, it was. It's, Good. it's nice to do that and then not feel like I've missed a massive opportunity immediately after. So... <laughs> I, I wanted you to experience interview because what I'm doing now is linking into interview. All right. So if we go back to our agenda, what was we had it in this order? Bullshit mm -hmm. bingo, Stanford, Stanford University. Now, we haven't finished Stanford, but we've linked into interview. We've linked into interview. The reason is the time is going by, is limited it? capacity on the camera. I'm very keen to get into interview because it's relevant to what you're going to do. And it also sets you up for stuff I'd like you to do after this session that will help you prepare for your interview, which is in the real world. Session two has been about helping Corbyn develop his awareness of the situation he's in at the moment and starting to think forward to what's likely to happen to him in the next year or two and maybe making some decisions about how he could start shaping a better life for himself and finding more of a purpose. So if that's going on in your life, this would be a good time to start writing some notes down. In session three, we're going to watch and analyze an actual interview going on so that we can help Corbin and yourself focus in on the important aspects of good interview behaviour.